Hi, Lisa, your thrift store lady here. And I'm today I decided to do a video on some of my vintage stuff. Um, these are not brand new hauls. These are actually things that I've been collecting over time. Most of them came from thrift stores, but some of them uh, came from antique stores or I have one item I actually got at a garage sale. So um, these pieces are not in perfect condition. Some of them are really old. I don't, I'm not a collector and I don't sell this stuff. I keep it and um, I just like it because it's old. So I'm not worried if there's a button missing or it's got a rip or it's got, um, you know, stones missing or anything like that. And um, I just like them because they're old. And the thing that's, that's cool about vintage is that um, I like to have something in my hand and be able to wear something that I know a woman wore a long time ago. Maybe she went to the store and picked this out and she would have been wearing this item when, you know, during the fashions of the times, the clothes she wore and what everything looked like around her, the kind of cars they were driving. And I just find, find that really fascinating and I like to be able to wear something that I know that somebody else during that time war and they're kind of like little time capsules they kind of hold um, a memory of times that are gone by so I really like vintage um, anyway I have some jewelry to show you I have some coats to show you and I have a couple I don't really have any vintage clothes from the air I'm going to do today but I do have a hat and a bag so what I'm going to do is uh, show you that my oldest stuff this is stuff that probably came I have some Victorian and then I also have pieces from the uh, 30s and the 40s, so I'm going to show them to you. Okay, first of all, um, <clears throat> I really like furs, and I hope this doesn't offend anyone who doesn't like furs, who, you know, for the cruelty to animals and everything, but these furs are very old. Um, this is a fur mink stole, like the ladies used to wear back in the movies, and um, it has an old label in it. And this time I brought my glasses so I can read the labels. Let's see. Okay, this one says Jaeger's Quality Store. And you can see it's got these old patterns on the inside of the lining. And the way that this one fits, it has, um, it's a stole so it doesn't have sleeves but it fits over your shoulders like this and then you take your arms and put them out here and you would have this and then you might put a fur clip on it and um, <clears throat> and go out on the town. Okay, this one is also an older jacket. This one is from Marshall Fields in Chicago and this one has um, is made out of lamb's wool. This is also a stole or a cape and I like these kinds of materials. I know Schiaparelli used to use a lot of lamb's wool in designing her clothes and hats but this is also a cape, and um, here's kind of, if I can get a little closer with the texture, this is very nicely textured. And you can see it does have a few condition issues. There's some ripping going on right here. I wore this to a party one time when I was dressed up as a movie star, and I really enjoyed wearing this coat and wondering about the woman who wore it years ago. Okay, I have an old bag. This is quite old. I don't know exactly how old this is, but you see it looks like this. It's satin and then it has this old um, catch that holds it. It's got little etchings which you probably can't see from where you are but anyway it folds over like this and you just put all of your little items in there when you're going out for the night. And um, I also have this really old hat this is a, a doe skin. It was made by Ruth Allen. It may not be as old as I think it is. It looks like a 40s style, but you just wear it kind of cocked to one side, and then you look like you just stepped out of the 40s. And this has a tag that says Ruth Ann, and then it also has some writing on the inside that says, um, let's see, doe skin, 100% wool, and then George W. Ballins Incorporated Made in the USA. So that's my vintage hat and bag. Um, I have a few antique items that I found. This is Edgeworth, Edgeworth pipe tobacco tin. The inside is really funky, but it's got some writing here. You can tell it's really old. And here's the front. 
So some man long ago had his tobacco in this tin and that's where he kept it, walking around way back in the olden days. Okay, and I also have this lighter. I don't know how old it is. Of course, it doesn't work. I don't know if it just needs fluid, but this is an old lighter that somebody way back in the 30s or 40s might have smoked, uh, lit their cigarette. Okay, um, I have some jewelry here. Some of it is older than others. This is a this looks really small. Now the place that I get a lot of this jewelry is from grab bags in thrift stores. And grab bags are plastic bags that are yay big. They're Ziploc bags and they just stuff a bunch of old jewelry and stuff in there. They put in beads, modern jewelry, fashion jewelry, old stuff, and they just cram it into these bags and you can't see what's on the inside. All you can see is the outside and they staple them shut. So they're really fun for treasure hunters like me because I take them home and I spread, I take the stuff out and I look and see what they have in there. And, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes I can find um, really, you know, unusual items like this pin right here. And it didn't look like much when I found it. You can see it's got these little uh, jagged kind of uh, zigzag edges. And you won't be able to see it from the camera, but um, this has little swallows etched into it. It also has a little, um, they call this a C-closure. Not like modern pins, it's just a little C-shape and you just tuck the pin in there. And um, I looked this up in some of my collector's books and I realized that this is actually a, an old silver Victorian pin. And the Victorian age was, I don't know, maybe the 1840s to the 1890s when Queen Victoria uh, ha had her reign in England. And this was very um, common type of, of design for the Victorian age. Okay, and then I also have um, this, which I found in a junk bag, in a grab bag. And it's kind of looks, it's on what looks like an old chain. And it was a coin and I thought it was kind of cool. I like this brassy metal. And um, I started looking at it when I was at work one day and it had a picture of St. George slaying the dragon on one side and then on the other side it had the year. I, re I looked it up and this is a Russian Kopec. Um, and the year on here, I was trying to figure it out, it looked really old. And it said something 57 and using a loop and turning it this way and that way because a lot of it is rubbed off, I realized that this coin is from 1757. Now this is really cool. That means that someone was using this coin, buying and selling things back in 1757, like, I don't know, some 300 years ago. I thought that was very, very cool. Okay, and the chain, I don't know where that comes from. It's got kind of an old attachment here. I thought it might be maybe from the 20s, but I'm not sure. Okay, um, here's a watch that was inside this watch. It opens up and in, you can see inside and then it has another thing that opens up let's see if i can find it here anyway it ha you can see the works inside the watch and looking at it really carefully i saw some writing and i got my out my loop or my magnifying glass and looked at it and it was etched 1914 or yeah 1914 so this watch was made in 1914 and some gentleman was carrying this around in his suit and taking it out and looking at it to see what time it was. And here's the back, it's got a little etching in the back. And I found watches just like this in really old Sears catalogs that have been reprinted so you can see what kind of clothes they wore and how much they cost way back in the 20s or you know the early or even earlier than that. And <clears throat> they had a lot of these kind of watches for sale in the Sears catalog. Okay, this is a spoon ring. It's difficult to see the etching, but they take the end of a spoon and curl it around and make a little ring out of it. This is very small. I can barely get it on my pinky, but there it is, a spoon ring. And I don't know exactly what era this is, this is from, but it's old. Okay, and then I get into the Art Deco stuff. I'll just show you a couple of these. This one is a pin. And after a while, you get to really recognizing Art Deco. This one's older because it also has a C clasp on the back, which is very small. But it has a C uh, 
a C clasp. And another way you can tell older pins is that the pin stem is extremely long. So um, this one is Art Deco. And also in the Art Deco days, which would be the late 20s and early 30s, they used a metal known as pot metal. And they would just take all the scraps of metal from uh, you know making other jewelry or whatever, and they would put it all in one pot. So it was called pot metal. And then they would make inexpensive jewelry out of it that people could um, not have to spend so much money. And they would put in rhinestones, which were called paste. And um, you can see the pot metal on the back. Usually you can tell because it's a very dull, uh, it's not real shiny, it's kind of a dull gray color. And the backs of some of these things that are made of pot metal, here's one from the 30s, and you can see it's kind of rounded out. So, and it's kind of a dull gray, and that's called pot metal. Art Deco, um, during one period, also used a lot of white rhinestones. So you can see this one has white rhinestones and then the pot metal back. This is called a dress clip. These were really popular for women to hook over their clothing. And um, just like there, like that. And they would pin them to the um, neckline of their dresses. They pin them onto hats. They would pin them onto, you know, pockets, whatever, wherever they could uh, latch them onto. And this is called a dress clip. It has the backing here. It's a hinge that snaps shut. And this is Art Deco. This is also an enormous Art Deco um, dress clip. This one is missing major stones. And this one has a decorative clip. And it's made of pot metal, you can see on the back, probably from the 30s. And then I also have um, rings and Art Deco earrings that have the Art Deco patterns on them. They used a lot of geometric patterns and you can kind of recognize these Art Deco pieces from what they call the pave crystals which are these little tiny rhinestones that are put in lines and then they also use baguette rhinestones like in this frame. Okay a couple more things from the 30s. Here's another dress clip. One book said that this type of dress clip exactly like this was Bakelite. I don't really think it is, but um, this one is gold grapes. There's the clip on the back, which clips so you can put it on your dress. Here's a, um, this is a brooch, probably from the 30s. It, may, it uses that Russian gold that they um, had jewelry that came out of Europe, in particular Czechoslovakia and Germany. So um, here's the back right here, very intricate. And these blue stones, I don't know if you can see them, but they are brilliant. Very, very sparkly. Okay, and getting along into some older pieces. Oh, this one's from the 30s. This one is one of my favorite types of pins. It's got enamel and rhinestones, and it's in a bouquet shape. And I, I collect these. I really like these. I've shown some of these on other videos that I have. I don't have a fur clip here, but fur clips come with prongs in the back that you can stick through a fur and then clamp it shut. Okay, um, oh, this one's from the 40s. <clears throat> this is in the shape of a question mark, and I did find this one in a collector book. Collector books are books that have pictures of the jewelry, the old, um, like, uh, vintage costume jewelry, and then sometimes has prices, which are usually much higher than you can sell the item for, but this one I think is from the 40s too. It uses moonstones, which were um, kind of started being used in the 30s and 40s, and they're loose sight that have a glow to them, and that's why they call them moonstones. This swirly design right here lets me know that I believe that this is from the 40s because of the style. Costume jewelry is very difficult to date. Usually you have to use um, the types of materials that are being used, the appearance of the back of the jewelry, like this being pot metal, indicates that it was made in the 30s. Um, you have to look at the style of the jewelry and what kind of hardware it has on it. And some of some costume jewelry is actually signed by the designer, and that makes it a little easier. This one is uh, signed, but it's very difficult to find the signature. This is a beautiful piece, and these stones are so sparkly. This is a pin. It's got major vertigree damage on the back. The centerpiece here is, a, is an art stone made out of glass. It took me forever to find the signature on this. 
It's on the pin stem. It's so small, I couldn't even show it to you with this camera and get it into focus. But it says on it, Made Germany. And um, the Germany, the pieces that came from Germany, the ones that came that just say Germany on them are older, probably more like turn of the century up until the late 30s. Um, pieces that say West Germany, made in West Germany, are made after World War II because before World War II there was no West Germany. So <clears throat> anyway, that's one way you can tell the age. Um, I think that's about it for the jewelry, so that means that I'm all done with this video. I'm going to make several vintage videos. I just had too much to show in one video. So I'm kind of doing it by era. This would be Victorian 20s, 30s, 40s some of my older stuff. So I'm going to do another video next that's about my stuff from the 50s and 60s. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.